Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Yusri El Sadak. I'm from Alexandria, Egypt, and I study computer sciences and biology at, Inver at Minerva University. Uh, I've been turning this summer at the Gregory Lab in the University of Pennsylvania. I've been working on adapting the pipeline of the Hammer algorithm to single cell RNA-seq data. So what is Hammer? Hammer is the high throughput annotation of modified ribonucleotides. So RNA is often altered by covalent modifications of nucleotides that modulate its structure and activity. And the recent discovery of the FTO RASC gene that acts as M6A demycylase for mRNA revealed the importance of RNA modifications in human biology and health. For example, it has been tied to the increased risk in obesity and type 2 diabetes. It's also tied to um, the developmental anomalies in mouse models and it being embryonic lethal in arabidopsis. Um, so when these modified nucleotides are converted by the reverse transcriptase to cDNA in RNA sequencing, they produce specific sequence patterns that are distinguishable from simple base calling errors. So Hammer is using these sequencing pattern to identify these modifications and also classify them transcriptome wide. But unfortunately, Hammer was developed to work with bulk RNA-seq data. Um, the general workflow in is Hammer is in front of you. On the left side is a pre is a pre-processing of data. We the the input is just raw RNA raw RNA bulk um, seq data. Um, we do the normal pre-processing until we get the map map reason a band file format, but we have to take care of some specific qualities in the alignment in order for the band file, in order for this online reads to work with Hammer. For example, we need to allow for mismatches, and that's really critical because as we said, Hammer is working on these mismatches patterns to identify the modifications. And we also need to make sure that the reverse transcriptase used is not performing any proofreading. Uh, also, we need to uh, filter out any splice junctions because Hammer works in continuous reads only. And we also need to have unique map reads and filter out or resolve multi-map reads. And then the BAM file is ready to input in the Hammer pipeline. So what is our goal and what, have, what I have been working on through all the summer? Uh, our goal basically is to adapt Hammer to single cell resolution so that we can, instead of just comparing the transcriptome among cell clusters and among cells, we can also compare modifications on top of this RNA-seq between cells and clusters. Um, and we add like a higher or a, another level of analysis for the HubMap project. Um, so what are the challenges that we faced? First, the different format of the single cell RNA-seq data and also the uh, criteria that we just mentioned in the slide before. So to work on this, I've developed a pipeline to use Hammer with RNA, with single cell RNA-seq. The first part of it is to do the mapping um, um, using, here we use star solo to do the aligning, CP demultiplexing, Yuma ID duplication, counting, and filtering or cell calling. Um, and here we ensure that the parameters are met for Hammer. Um, for that, we use the annotated genome index as an input as well as the raw single cell RNA-seq FASTQ files. And the main outputs here are the filter count metrics and the line read spam file that meets the Hammer requirements. The part two, for part two, we have two, two different routes. The first route is cell by cell and the other one is cluster. The main difference is in the cell by cell, we can basically um, have a Hammer read or modifications detect the modification of cell, single cell level. But in clusters, we compare among clusters of different cell types or different cell states. Um, for cell by cell, we, we, we use the, we filter the BAM for real cells using the filter barcode detected by star solo. And then we split the BAM by the CB tag, uh, the cell barcodes to have a BAM file for each cell. While in cluster, we use the count matrix through, to, to make, use the SRAS standard clustering pipeline, extract a data frame for the cell barcode and the corresponding clusters. And then we subset from the BAM file generated by star so we have a BAM file for each cluster to input into Hammer. Well, here, um, the cell by cell 
method is technically possible, but we have challenges here that we don't have enough depth in the single cell RNA data for each cell. So the results might be uh, problematic because Hammer needs enough depth in order to produce good quality results. Also, um, like, which was why we think the clusters is the optimal method for now. And also it might be more biologically interesting because we are mostly more interested to compare different cell types and states. So to, to test this pipeline or to use it, we obtained data for single cell RNA-seq, data for escort cells in Drosophila ovaries from the GO database. Uh, and then we proceeded to build a genome index. And for the genome index, it needs to be annotated for, ex for exons. And we use STAR to build the genome index. And the annotation files need to be filtered before. Uh, as we mentioned, we don't we will filter out the split junctions, but the reason why we need we really need the annotation file here is that stars star solo would actually produce a count matrix that includes the features genes. So we need the annotations. And then we proceed to the aligning step with star solo and other um, like processing processing steps by star. Um, we need to make sure that's compatible with Hammer, as we said. The main three points that we said earlier is the unique map reads, allowing for mismatches, and filtering out split junctions. The first one, which is really important, is to have the CB tag, is to make sure that it is included in the BAM file. And for that to happen, we need to output a sorted BAM. Without, a sort, without the sorting step, we will not have the CB tag, even if you include it in the commands. And we have the corresponding commands here um, for star solo. Uh, after that, we pre-process or process the star out, the main star outputs that we are interested in. Like we index the PAM file with SAM tools, and then we load the filter count matrix into as a matrix into R and build the SRAT object. And we proceed by the standard SRAT pipeline for clustering, which includes the pre-processing steps of quality control and cell selection, normalization, and feature selection, scaling and linear dimensional reduction with BCA. And then we do the actual processing with dimensionality determining, and then we finally cluster the cells. And you can proceed with viewing the clusters like here, and you can do other downstream analysis as needed. But the main part here is doing the actual clustering as we are interested in obtaining this data frame of each cell or cell barcode and the corresponding cluster ID. And we do, because we use this and we, we process this data frame, and use it to subset the BAM file for each cluster to have a BAM file for each individual cluster that we would run into Hammer and get the individual or get the modifications for each cluster uh, separately. Two minutes remaining. So here are the results that we got. On the left, you can have this is for the third cluster. On the left, you can see the exact location of the modifications, the IDC, the modification type. And in the middle, you have some statistics, including the significant test. Um, and surprisingly, in the cluster number one, which is twice uh, has twice the read depths at the third cluster, we found zero modifications compared to the third one that even has less cells, and we found eight modifications. And one of the modif more a lot of modif modifications that we found is located in the UTR, three prime UTR region, which is known for having a lot of modifications. And this gene is actually a major early eggshell protein. So having modifications there could have a, a big um, influence. What are our future goal? What are we doing next? Well, we are basically trying to understand what these results actually mean, why we found this modification in one cluster, not the other. And we're also trying to work on single cell RNA seq data from human tissues and organs. And more importantly, we want to integrate the single cell hammer pipeline with other hub map technologies and research. So instead of just comparing transcriptome data between cells and cluster, we can also compare RNA covalent modifications using only the single cell RNA seq data um, as an input in hammer. Finally, I want to thank NIH and hub map for this wonderful learning opportunity. Uh, and I'm grateful for this chance to participate in groundbreaking research and developing cutting edge technologies. I'd also like to thank uh, my BI, Dr. Brian Gregory, and my mentor, Rangu, 
as well as Dr. John Young Kim, Hugh Nguyen, and John Rosario for welcoming me into the lab this summer, guiding me through a process, and offering me support along the way. I also want to thank my home institution, Minerva University, for preparing me to this and cultivating the qualities of a global citizen scientist in me. Thank you, everyone.